Hello guys and welcome to this video on the circumference of a circle, part of the year 8 course and uh, well actually year 8, what does that even mean? It is a circumference of a circle and it is actually important across the world, so really good to see you. What am I going to do? I'm going to show you about the circumference, finding the circumference, finding the radius, finding the diameter and doing it with and without a calculator. Of course that's going to be useful to you, um, well hopefully. My name's Darren from Maths Guru. Uh, do me a favor if you can. There is a little doohickey being pointed to in the corner there. If you can actually subscribe to my YouTube channel, life would be awesome. I'm not rich. I'm never going to be rich, never going to be famous. Nobody watches these videos. Um, but every now and again, when somebody clicks subscribe, I go, yes, uh, it just lets me know that someone's watching. Above is a link to my uh, website where all these videos are basically sorted by... Uh, chapter and textbook and, and they have downloadable notes for your exercise books, your summary books or whatever else. So if you can head over there and sign up, greatly appreciated. And always leave comments below if at any point in the video you're like, ah, oh, I really enjoyed that or awesome. So come of a circle, yes now, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll know that there are different names for parts of circles, you'll know what the circumference is, you'll be able to find it when being given either a diameter or a radius and be able to reverse the process. Now maths is a big fat trick, thank you very much Barry. Why you do this, we don't know, but you know, if I asked you to find the perimeter of a shape or I asked you what the word perimeter meant, I'm pretty sure everyone in the maths world would go, ah, oh, it's the distance around the edge. We've been telling you that for years and years and years. So the distance around the edge, perimeter, thank you very much. And then lo and behold, out comes Barry and he goes, oh, you know what, lads, I've got an idea. We've got circles, yeah? Let's not call it perimeter. Let's call it circumference. That'll confuse 90% of the country. I don't know whether Barry actually speaks like that. It'd be very strange, really, because uh, I'm in Australia and he would undoubtedly have an Australian accent. But the point of it is, perimeter and circumference, same thing. So for a circle, the perimeter of the circle, that distance all the way around the edge, is the circumference. And it's really important, guys, circumference is all the way around that whole circle. Um, pretty much, yeah, that's it. Now, the other thing you need to know is that to find the circumference, you need to know two things, either the diameter or the radius. What is the diameter? I hear you shout. Well, there's a picture behind me. You can see that. The diameter is very clearly the distance across a circle from one side to the other, but it has to pass through the center. Okay, so this is the diameter here. Do you notice it's going from one side to the other and it's passing through the center? How do you know the center? Because generally we mark it with a big dot. Very useful. The other distance that you need to know about is the radius. Now the radius is an interesting one because it doesn't matter how we draw the radius in maths, and mostly we draw it like that. Everyone thinks the radius then is that horizontal distance, but it has to be from the middle and it goes horizontally to the edge. That's not true. This is a radius. This is a radius. That is a radius. This is a radius. That is a radius. That now looks like pizza. I'm hungry. All of those are radii, which is the plural. It doesn't matter how you draw them. Anything from the center of a circle to the edge is always a radius. And the good news is that the diameter is basically made up of two lots of the radius. So if I'm given the radius, I can find the diameter. So there's some important language here about how do we use that to find the circumference of a circle. Well, as I say, trying to find the perimeter of these shapes would probably be a lot, lot easier than we think because the perimeter is gonna be that length plus 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 that length, plus that length. he says. Likewise, change the shape around, different shape, but the perimeter is just wherever you start, you walk around the shape until you get back to where you begin. All right, so that's perimeter. Same, same with a circle. Sadly, we have to use the formula to find the circumference of a circle, and here are two of said formulas, C equals and C equals. Now, in math, C stands for circumference, or it does particularly when you've got circles. Yep, and then we've got this two times Whoa, hold on a minute, what is this? What is this? Well, this is called pi. It is, well, it's basically a number. It's a ratio, all right? Someone somewhere has worked out that there is some sort of a link between the circumference of a circle and the radius and diameter, and that thing is called pi. Don't know why, don't know who, doesn't matter. Good thing is, it's a button on my calculator, which I'll show you in just a moment. So the two formulas that you need to know are circumference is equal to, now normally we don't write the time signs in, two pi r, or pi d. Now, well, r stands for the radius and d stands for the diameter. And notice the difference. This formula, 2 pi r, this one, pi d. 
And to be perfectly honest with you, in many cases, we can find out the uh, radius from this first one here. I tend to use this all the time because if they've given me the diameter, I can find the radius. Because remember, the diameter is two lots of the radius. A lot of what I'm putting behind me at the moment or scrolling up is for your notes to download from maskguru.com. All right, so hopefully they are useful. But um, I'm using the Casio ClassPad for my lessons, which means that uh, my Pi button is under Maths 1. And there, you may be using a different calculator. There will be a Pi button on there somewhere. Ask your teacher, look it up online, it will be there. But that Pi button is really, really helpful for me. Now, knowing this, let's have a look at some examples and see how we actually apply the theory. Find the circumference of the circles correct to two decimal places. I'm going to highlight because that's useful. Use a calculator for the value of pi. Now, why would the question tell you that? Well, believe it or not, there are other ways of actually calculating circumference. Pi can be approximated. We can use different values of pi depending on how easy we want to make it for ourselves. More on that in a moment. Find the circumference of these circles. So we know that circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Now, what does that mean? 2 times pi times the radius. Do they give me the radius in the question? Yes, they do. So it's 2 times pi times 3.5. Now, again, when I teach this stuff, formula, substitute, and then my next line is solved. This is where I fire up my calculator. And with my calculator fired up, I've got it on math 1, so I just do 2 times, I quite literally hit the pi button, which I didn't then. I hit the pi button, and then multiply by 3.5, and out comes... There we go, my answer of 21.99. Now, if I left my answer like that, you're wrong, sadly, because the answer would have to have meters in it because they gave me meters in the question. Now, if you've got your calculator in the wrong mode, for example, you've got it in standard mode and I do this, then you're only going to end up with 7 pi. Where did that come from? Well, that's called an exact value. And later on in maths, we actually prefer to write things in what we call exact values, where we leave the pi as a pi sign. Now, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself there. Don't worry about it. Generally speaking, leave your calculator in the decimal mode and then round it to as many decimal places as the question says. All right, let's have a look at the next question. Circumference is equal to, and again, I always use 2 pi r. Why remember two formulas where one can work? But here is the trick. Is that a radius? It's a diameter. So bearing in mind, I know that my diameter is twice the length of my radius. I know my radius in this situation would be two centimeters. Why? Because this section here is two centimeters, that bit is two centimeters, which is what makes up my radius, uh, sorry, my diameter. So in this situation, that becomes two times pi times radius, which is two, and everything else is done. Formula, substitute, solve. Do you have to write all this working out? Yes, you do. Two times pi times two, which gives me a wonderful value of 127 and centimeters. Now this is a distance. It's a distance around the edge. It's not an area, it's not a volume. So it's just centimeters, not centimeters squared. Now we talked about the idea of approximate values. And sometimes you won't be allowed to use a calculator. So bye bye calculator. And it will say to you, okay, do it in your head. Well, that's where we use these approximate values for pi. And there are three of them. First one, nice and easy, three. It's roughly three. Next one, 3.14, and the reason I've put the brackets is sometimes we say 3.142, depends what level of maths you're doing. And another one is 22 over 7, that's a fraction. Now again, notice this little wobbly sign, that means it's approximately equal. Right? Pi is pi, it's not equal to 3, it's approximately equal to 3. So if I have this circle here, and let's say that that is... 10 centimeters in radius, then we know then that circumference is going to be 2 times pi times radius, which is 2 times, now it says the pi is to use 3 times the radius. I can do this because 2 times 3 is 6, so that becomes 6 times 10, which is equal to 60 centimeters, right? Or it's approximately equal to 60 centimeters. What about if I'm using 3.142? Let's use exactly the same example. Makes the maths easier for me. Let's make that 10 centimeters again. Circumference is equal to 2 times pi times radius. So in this situation, they want us to use 3.14. Okay, I can do that. 2 times 3.14 times 10. Now, the great thing here is when I multiply by 10 or 100 or 1,000 or anything with a zero in it, it's just place value. So I can actually do that in my head by bouncing my decimal point one place over. So that now becomes 2 times 31.4, and 
And again, I can do that in my head as 62.8 centimeters, not a centimeter squared. It is just a distance. See how this works? Now, obviously, many times the questions will try and make it easier for you. What about this approximation? Well, I'm actually going to make this now 14 centimeters. You'll see why in just a moment. What do we do here? So circumference is equal to two times pi times radius. Now in this situation, they want pi to be a fraction. So it becomes 22 on seven times my radius of 14. Now, many of you will jump for the calculator here, but if you've watched the previous videos on fractions, you will realize that we can actually change that into two on one and 14 on one, and we can actually start cross canceling. I noticed that seven goes into 14, seven goes into seven once, seven goes into 14 twice, and actually now my calculation becomes two times 22 times two, because one times one times one on the bottom just stays as one, and so using a little bit more room up here, that becomes four times 22, which is 88 and centimeters. So approximating makes life a lot, lot easier. So here are some examples from Cambridge textbooks. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for letting me use your examples. Again, they want you to use the given approximation for pi. We can do that. Rightio, so circumference is equal to two times pi times radius. Every time, write the formula, the chances are you get one mark in that for every exam, which is equal to two times. They want me to use 3.14 times. Now, is this a radius? No, it isn't. It is a, a diameter. So I need to know then that my radius is half of that value, which is 25, which is 25. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Remember, in my head, I know that 2 times 25 is 50. So that becomes 50 times 3.14. Now, I know that 50 is the same as 5 times 10. Now, you're going to ask, why did I do that? Well, I've got a 10 now and a 3.14. I can do place value. There is a, this is possibly a long way of doing it. But 5 times 31.4, what is that? Well, again, don't fire for your calculator. Do a separate calculation. 31.4 times by 5. You guys have been doing this since primary school. 5 times 4 is 20. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 2 is 7. 3 fives are 15. That is 157. So 150 centimeters should be my correct answer. Yep, and there we go. So pencil and paper all the way. What about this question here? Right, well, circumference is equal to two times pi times radius. Two times pi, they want me to use is 22 on seven, times the radius of 21. Do this as I did before, turn those into fractions. Now look to see if we can cross cancel. Seven goes into there once, seven goes into there three times. And so that now becomes two times 22 times three, which is six times 22. And again, 22 times six, is 12, is 132, and the units are meters. Now this takes practice, guys, I get that. It takes practice, particularly with all the fraction stuff, but the more you do it, the better you are. Now, obviously, we can do stuff backwards in maths, and that's how we throw spanners in the works for you guys. We actually ask you to do stuff backwards. Now, in this situation, look at the question. I know it's not a circle for the moment, but I wanted to highlight the point. You have a triangle there, but this time they're giving you the perimeter is equal to 19. So having given you the perimeter, we know that to find the perimeter of that triangle, we would go all the way around the edges. So X plus X plus five. We know that this is X here because those little marks there tell me that the triangle is isosceles or they're the same length. But they've told me. So when I do formula and substitute, if I now put the value of P as 19, do we know the value of X? We don't but we have this value of five. I've substituted. Now I'm gonna actually simplify. So 19, oops, is equal to two X plus five. I'm gonna take away five from both sides. Let's write that there. Take away five from both sides to give me 14 is equal to two lots of X. And so X is equal to seven centimeters. So I noticed what they did there. You did it backwards. And that very much is the case of what might happen in maths here. So. A formula for your summary book or your notes or your exercise book is that the diameter is equal to the circumference divided by pi. Now, having found the diameter, remember I can find the radius because the diameter is twice as long as the radius. So let's have a look at the question here. It says, find the diameter and radius of a circle which has a circumference of 25 centimeters. So we know it's 25 centimeters all the way around. And we can use our formula, remember, because we know that circumference, uh, let's try that one again. We know that diameter is equal to uh, 
circumference divided by pi. Oh, hold on a moment. We know the circumference is 25 and we know what pi is. Fire up my calculator. Let's do 25 and we'll do uh, not times divided. No, I said divide by uh, pi, hit enter and out comes the value that the diameter there is 7.96. Let's do it to two decimal places centimeters. How do I find my radius? Well, let's scroll over a moment. The radius then is going to be my diameter divided by two, which is seven point. Now I'm not going to use the final answer. I'm going to use my calculator answer divided by two because you should never use a rounded answer to find another answer. Always use what's on your calculator. So if I now divide that by two and hit enter, I get 3.98 centimeters. And there we go, guys. Circumference of a circle is done. Thank you so much for watching. It's really good to see you if you haven't already done so. Can you do me the favor and subscribe by clicking the doohickey again? Just lets me know you're watching. Leave a comment below if you enjoyed the video. Um, give a shout out on TikTok and uh, to whoever you can, your mates, let them know this channel is here. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in another video a little bit later on. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.